Hello, my name is Dr. Minda, and in this lecture series, we're going to discuss the cell and cell organelles. So, um, just to begin, the cell is the smallest basic structural and functional unit of life, and it contains cytoplasm that is enclosed within the cell membrane. The cytoplasm has two um, components. It has organelles that are membrane bound and inclusion bodies that are non membrane bound. So we have single cell organisms, which you um, did in secondary school, such as my paramecium, the protozoa, algae, bacteria. Those are single cell organisms. Other examples you have the virus, then you have something like red blood cells, the ovum, the eggs. Those are single cell uh, lives that exist. Okay. Then, characteristics of living things, you have to understand this as you uh, look at each cell. So we have respiration, nutrition, excretion, growth and development, as well as um, irritability, locomotion and reproduction. So many cells of the same um, structure and function and perform the same function form a tissue. Many tissues that subserve same function from an organ and organs form an organ system. So we have different types of um, cells in the body. We have muscle cells, nerve cells, glial cells, and so on and so forth. And the cells, as we have said, are covered by a cell membrane and contain um, organelles and um, inclusions, where organelles are membrane bound and inclusions are non-membrane bound. So what are the functions of the different organelles? So the nucleus is the one that stores the genetic blueprint of a cell in form of coded messages for physiological processes. So it's the one that directs synthesis and cell reproduction, so synthesis of DNA. Then um, the ribosomes carry out protein synthesis, while uh, and uh, also the endoplasmic reticulum carries out protein synthesis. Then we have the mitochondria that um, usually contains some genetic material, and this one the mitochondria also helps to uh, produce energy. So we have transcription of messages that can occur within the nucleus. And then when we get to the ribosomes, translation occurs. And then after that, uh, the protein will be synthesized and modification will occur in the Golgi apparatus. So modification comprises polymerization, folding, cyclating, glycosylation. So when you fix a glucose on a protein, that's what we call glycosylation. So the changes the protein is able to undergo and this occurs in mainly the Golgi apparatus, but partially the endoplasmic reticulum. Then packaging of the proteins. After modification, the proteins are packaged, and this is mainly by Golgi apparatus. So they are packaged into vesicles. So you have to form the proteins, but this begins by transcription, which occurs in the nucleus, then goes to the ribosome for translation and protein synthesis. And the proteins are modified within the Golgi apparatus, which also carries out the packaging into vesicles. And then the vesicles, after they have been packaged, they have to be transported to the cell membrane or to other organelles. What carries out transport within a cell? The cytoskeleton. So you have this cytoskeleton uh, com uh, comprised the microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. And these usually contain contractile proteins, kinesins, dynanes, actin mousing molecules, basically that will enable transportation and movement. So the cytoskeleton are microtubules, microfilaments, and intermediate filaments. Then we also have um, organelles that carry out lysis or digestion of debris and toxic substances, and these include the lysosomes, phagosomes, and peroxisomes. Then we also have organelles that are responsible for movement. Those include the centrioles. And these ones, centrioles, they're from the centrosomes and they contain the microtubular organizing, centers so they help in the formation of mitotic spindles so these are the radar mechanisms of the cell the microtubular organization center and forming the mitotic spindles mainly these are carried out by the centrioles then we also have projections from the cell that aid in the movement of particles we also call them the, like sort of brush border and we also have intercellular communications and proteins such as second messengers, calcium transport channels, receptors, G proteins, binding proteins. All these are proteins that ensure intercellular commun communication in between cells. Okay. Then we have inclusion bodies which are non-membrane bound. They could be organic or inorganic. 
in, they include lipid droplets or debris from monout organelles or intracellular microbes or parasites and bacteria. So these form inclusion bodies within the cell. So this is just a structure of a nucleus. Remember, it contains a nuclear envelope, which is not continuous, so it has pores around it. Again, this is your nucleus. And usually it contains the genomic material, which is encoded as DNA. It contains a nucleolus, and it's covered by, uh, the nucleus is covered by a nuclear envelope. Main function is transcription. So it's able to synthesize RNA from the present DNA, and that helps in cell division. Then we have a rib ri the ribosomes, okay? So the ribosomes are a site for protein synthesis, and they're found in two locations. They could be free in the cytoplasm, or they could be attached in an endoplasmic reticulum, making it to be a rough endoplasmic reticulum. So these are the ribosomes, and what happens in the ribosomes is mainly translation. So the protein that has been transcribed in the DNA it comes to the ribosomes for translation to occur. So you can see from your messenger RNA, you're able to grow a polypeptide chain within the ribosome. So then we have endoplasmic reticulum. There are two types, the smooth endoplasmic reticulum and the rough. The rough have the ribosomes studded onto them. Again, this is your endoplasmic smooth and this is rough endoplasmic reticulum. They usually contain the cistern and the cistern space, species. So the endoplasmic reticulum consists of membrane and closed branching tubules, okay? And closed branching tubules and flattened sacs, which we call the cistern and vesicles. So we have two types of endoplasmic reticulum, the rough that contain ribosomes, and these are usually site for protein synthesis where translation can occur. The same translation we're seeing in the ribosomes. We have translation of messenger RNA into a polypeptide chain that will form a protein in the rough endoplasmic reticulum. Smooth endoplasmic reticulum has no ribosomes and it's usually a site of lipid and steroid synthesis. So structures that, uh, like the gonads, ovaries, the testes, the adrenal cortex, these synthesize steroids. So the cells in these organs will have abundant smooth endoplasmic reticulum. So this is the uh, Golgi apparatus. Golgi apparatus usually have a cis phase and a trans phase. So again, they're also made up of cystin. And remember we said Golgi apparatus is where um, modification of proteins and packaging occurs. So they have four to six cystin with an entry point that is the cis surface and an exit point, which is a trans. So they usually distribute synthesized proteins and lipids from the endoplasmic reticulum to the plasma membrane. Post-translational modification occurs in the Golgi apparatus. So the protein that you formed, you fix it with a glycogen or a glycoprotein. So you either form a glycoprotein or um, proteoglycan and so on and so forth. You can sulfate it with sugars. So that's what you call post-translational modification. Then next is a mitochondrium. It, it contains an outer membrane and an inner membrane, which is thrown into folds, which are called the crystal. And in between the two membranes, you have an intermembrane space, and in, within there is the matrix. Now, the mitochondria is the respiratory organelle of the cell. It produces ATP, and that gives the cell um, the energy it requires to perform its function. It has a smooth outer membrane and an inner membrane that is folded, and in between there's an intermembrane space. Then it has a matrix, and the matrix contains DNA, mitochondrial genome. Then we go to the lysosomes. This is a lysosome, so it contains hydrolytic enzymes. Again, it's an organelle, so it's covered by membrane. So it's a vesicular structure with a single smooth membrane that has an intracellular digestive system because of the hydrolytic enzymes. So it carries out autophagy and autolysis. Autophagy is when you destroy unwanted cell organelles, while autolysis is when you digest the whole cell after cell death has occurred. So autophagy is when you destroy the organelles and autolysis is digestion of cells after death. Then next is peroxisome. These are usually round or oval in shape. They are membrane bound like any other organelle and they contain high concentration of oxidative enzymes. Remember, their main function is detoxification, so they'll have oxidative enzymes. Where do we find abundant peroxisome? In the cells of the liver and kidneys, in organs that carry out detoxification. So their functions, they help with cholesterol synthesis, bile acid synthesis, and detoxification. Name three functions of peroxisome. Cholesterol synthesis, bile acid synthesis, and detoxification through breakdown of free radicals.
So these are um, other cytoplasmic organelles, the cytoskeleton. There are three different types, the microfilaments, intermediate filaments, and microtubules. As you can see, microfilaments, intermediate filaments, and the microtubules. So which intermediate filaments do we have? Epithelium contains keratin. Mesenchymal cells contain vimentin. Muscles contain desmin. Glial cells contain uh, gliofibrillary acidic proteins, while neurons contain neurofilaments. So these are the type of intermediate filaments that you have. So you can bring this in an MCQ, we ask you to match. So remember, epithelium has keratin, mesenchymal cells have vimentin, muscles have desmin, glial cells have gliofibrillary acidic protein, while neurons have neurofilaments. So what are the functions of cytoskeleton? They maintain the cell shape, the cell polarity, cell motility, they are responsible for movement within the cells or movement of organelles and vesicles. Then they give a structural backbone to cilia and flagella, so enable them to beat. And then movement on the cell surface, and they form a uh, part of the structure of an axoneme in the flagellum of the spermatozoa. And the last function is spindle assembly and chromosomal movement. So mainly the cell structure, shape, and polarity, cell motility, and then they will help with the backbone of cilia and flagella, therefore the flagella and spermatozoa depends on the cytoskeleton. So to maintain your cell structure is cytoskeleton. To maintain um, spindles in the mitosis is role of cytoskeleton. Then the centrioles are road-shaped bodies that are made of microtubules and these usually direct uh, formation of mitotic spindle. So centrioles direct uh, mitotic spindle formation during cell division. Then we have um, specific uh, cellular specialization. So we have lining epithelium, active and active ion transport, specialization for protein synthesis, steroid synthesis, and contractile cells. So lining epithelium have apical specialization, lateral specialization, and basal specialization. Apical specialization include microvilli, like in the ileum and duodenum, the cilia, like in the respiratory tract, the trachea, and stereocilia, like in the inner ear and the epididymis. So that just shows you how the microvilli look like. You can appreciate here are the apices of the cell. These are the microvilli and uh, light microscopy. Again, these are the microvilli and the electron microscopy showing you microvilli again. Lateral specialization, we have three types, the occluding junctions, adhering junctions, and gap junctions. You can appreciate gap junction here. Okay, you can see the tight junctions here. So this is just the lumen showing you the gap uh, junctions. Again, showing you the gap junctions that are going to allow um, transport. You can see tight junction here. Again, this just shows you the catherines, which are proteins. Okay, you can see intermediate filaments within the cell, but the catherines are outside the cell. So that shows you the structure of desmosomes. So desmosomes are sort of lateral cell specialization. You can appreciate your gap junctions. So basal specialization, we have basal invagination. They are usually associated with apical and lateral modification, and mainly basal specializations such as invagination are for active ion transport. And form of basal uh, specialization, a good example are the hemidesmosomes. So these are the basal lamina, okay, and you can appreciate that. Basal invaginations. Abundant mitochondria and junctional complexes, as well as microvilli, these are features of an active ion transporting cell. Basal invagination, abundant basal mitochondria, junctional complexes, and microvilli for ion transport. Okay, so where do we find this? In renal tubules, the ducts of salivary gland, and intestinal lining. So these are the areas where active ion transport occurs. Then we move to um, protein synthesizing cells, where do we find them? Like in exocrine and endocrine glands, neuronal cell bodies, and synthetic cells of supporting tissue. And what are the features of protein synthesizing cells? Large and chromatic nucleus, prominent nucleolus, prominent rough endoplasmic reticulum. So those are the features of a protein synthesizing cell. So they also have prominent supranuclear Golgi, numerous elongated mitochondria, abundant secretory vessels. Then next we go to steroid synthesizing cells in the adrenal cortex, the gonads like the ovaries and um, testes, and the features include a balanced smooth endoplasmic reticulum, they have spherical mitochondria, and lipid droplets. These are features of steroid synthesizing cells. They also have prominent lysosomes and prominent nucleus. 
Then we go to contractile cells. Propulsion cells or contractile cells have numerous microfilaments and mitochondria as well as smooth endoplasmic reticulum.